actually headed off to my dad's property and we're gonna be helping him out with a couple of things. So he's gonna be doing an oil change on the King Ranch and then he's working on a couple of other projects in the barn. So we're just gonna head on over there and tag along and see what he's got going on today. Just cause we haven't really done a video like that in a little while so I thought it might be something a little bit different to bring back. Just so you can get an idea of how big Rosine is. This truck over here is on a two and a half inch leveling kit in 33 by 1250s, 20 by 12s. This truck is a five inch lift with a two and a half inch spacer in the front on top of the lift, 35 by 1550s and 24 by 14s, which is very similar to what that silver truck is gonna look like when it's done. Just picture that. I mean, you guys know, anybody that has a second gen, you know what a leveled second gen on 33s looks like. It already looks like a pretty mean truck. And then you've got huge, <laughs> which is what it's gonna look like. So if you're wondering why the little dramatic clip of the table, my dad actually, hand built this table. What was the purpose behind the building of this table, just to clarify? This is one of my wife's Christmas presents. Now, the reason it's still in here and not in the kitchen is because I put, I built the table and put the coats. This is just Danish oil. There's no polyurethane or anything on there. I just like how it brings out the natural wood colors. But when I put the finish coat on last time, I came back Christmas Eve and uh, I saw that there was just like a, I don't know if it was dust or something. So I ended up having to strip the top down. I just sand it down basically and then recoat it. So now it's pretty smooth. And there's a fine line between keeping it rough, rustic and super sanded. So uh, I think it came out pretty much the way I envisioned it to where it still has that rustic, but yet you're not gonna get splinters and stuff on it, which would be bad news, so. But that's what that's all about. And the bench. And then I decided, well, every rustic table needs to have a bench. So that's what I'm doing now is I just finished build this and now I'm putting the first coat of Danish oil on it as well. Just look at the greens in the wood. So I just, uh, I'm no expert at this, but I like to just take a, just a t-shirt and just rub it in and let it dry. And then do the same thing over and over until it gets that right finish. This old wood just soaks it in. Oh yeah, did uh, I'm sure some of them may look at it and just know that it's old barn wood, but this is also, a lot of this is some of the wood that is left over from um, some of the other projects he had going on. So he's got this, and he's, you actually said that the, trim piece around the edge of the table was yeah. actually from a scrap pile. Scrap pile. From so some I, other stuff. I there. have a hard time throwing out this old wood. Or like, <laughs> I just, I want to try to use it for something. So, um, yeah, these, these pieces here were for floor joists up top there that they were all just a little bit off. And so uh, Malik and I ripped them down, what, three years ago maybe? A while. And I'm like, I'm just not gonna throw this away. So Dude, I just- trim pieces are really good kindling. <laughs> like, so we just kept moving the pile around as I needed different space in the barn, but I knew I would use it for something. And that's what I did was, um, I'm using this stuff for trim for this stuff and in furniture, I used some on the, um, that crib I, I built for you guys. And then in one of the upstairs rooms, I used it all around the top to be able to, just because it, it looks cool where you look, you can see it's just rough. Like show them the end of that table to where it looks all rough. And then you got the nail holes and stuff where I had to basically pull every nail out, which took forever. But I mean, it just gives it that character, you know? Really so like cool looking. I do like how that oil really defines all of the the grains of wood and everything, you know? Yeah, and again, it's the fine line of like on a bench or the table, it's like, you want it to be rough, but yet you don't want to get splinters in your, in your hands <laughs> when, you're, when you're sitting down eating a, a steak. So it's trying to 
sand it down enough while maintaining that rough look. And then what I did was I took a black wood putty and I just rubbed it in across there. So then that way all the, the holes and such were filled with that. And then when I sanded it down, it kind of just even gives it those darker tones, which I like. Yeah, that's sweet. You haven't really put that many miles on it. No, because I've been driving the power a lot this year. So now it's time for a King Ranch service, huh? Yeah. You said it's been since March. Almost a year ago. Almost a year. I did not follow well, it. I followed the mileage protocol, not the time protocol. Well, Honestly, power no. strokes are bulletproof anyway. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time changing the one to begin with. Yeah, no kidding. No. You know what they say, don't don't fix it until it's broken, right? It's legit. Or maintain it. Or maintain it. I remember when you did your oil change because we actually did the white 2018 Reagan's truck oh, right. at the same time. So that was a while ago. That one sucked, didn't it? Yes. It wasn't that... Yes, it was in a weird stupid position. spot mm -hmm. for the filter versus this one's like this huge one, like kind right of an intelligent design. Yeah, no kidding. Right in the wide freaking open. <laughs> There goes Dad and the King Ranch. I'm gonna do a little video with you guys here very shortly. And it's not gonna be a long video, but it's just gonna be a little segment talking about photo angle for the trucks. And like when people post pictures of their trucks, and they can make them look super squatted or make them look like they got a little rake, depending on the angle of the photo. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For example, I posted a picture of Rosie on my Instagram page and all kinds of people are going, oh my gosh, that truck is so squatted, it's horrible. I can't believe you squatted the truck and whatever, which we've already discussed this and I'm sure there's people that are just doing it to be funny, you know, try to push your buttons and whatever because they know that my wife doesn't like it when people say her truck's all squatted out because she doesn't like super squatted truck. But for example, if you were to take a photo at this angle and snap it and post on social media, you would think, the truck's either level or it's got a little bit of front rake. Now let's say you go to the front, okay, and look, it just looks different because it's a different view of the truck. It just kind of sits different, just whatever. And you gotta keep in mind the levelness of the ground and whatever. Well, the truck still looks for the most part level, but then like when you get down in the front, which is how I take a lot of my photos, you get down and back or over to the side and down like this, it makes the truck look like it's squatted in the back and it's way higher in the front. But in reality, it's not. I actually just took a tape measure. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this if you watch my stories, that is. I took a tape measure and I measured tire to fender and tire to fender, like the bottom of the tire to the top of the fender, bottom to the top of the fender. Obviously, when I say top of the fender, I'm talking about you know, right here. And it was like 49 inches in the back and like 49 and a half on the front. Like it was very, very, very close to perfectly level, which is what we wanted. We did a five inch lift in the rear and seven inches of lift in the front. But the reality is guys, you gotta understand that photo angles make a huge difference. And then like, if you look at the truck at this angle, it looks level. So, I mean, it's just, if photo angle is a huge deal, and also the body lines of a truck can make it look squatted or leveled or raked in the front. It just kind of, it all just kind of varies, but uh, no, her truck is not squatted. Okay, so we're having a business meeting here in the Walmart parking lot, <laughs> like, like actually the Walmart parking lot. I found a Jeep. It's a nice Jeep. It's a 7.3. It's a 97 Jeep Cherokee. It's one of those boxy square ones. It's got no fenders on the front. It's pretty cool. Six inch lift, 35s. Jeep gang. <laughs> Jeep gang. No, but in all seriousness, guys, I did find a Jeep very, very local to us, like within four miles. I was looking at GMC Jimmies, some Chevy Blazers and stuff like that. I started to look at some of the Jeep Cherokees and I found one that I really like and it's very, very cheap, higher miles, but for what I'm gonna do with it, I'm not gonna sweat it. I guess the doors are just missing. He says it runs and drives great. He's like, I mean, it's a trail monster, but 
it'll go 70 miles an hour down the highway just fine. I don't know if we're gonna buy it or not. It kinda depends on what Reagan says. I'm gonna let her have the final vote, and uh, if she says we can buy it, we'll buy it. But if she says we can't buy it, then we'll still buy it, because I think that's what you guys want me to do. Right? I mean, if it was me, it'd be a square body that has monster mud tires on it, but... Yeah, but for like 900 bucks. But yeah, so we did find a Jeep. I don't know um, for sure if I'm gonna pull the trigger or not. If I do, it could literally be like... We're gonna go over... Tomorrow. Like, like hills with it, even yeah. though there's no hills in Indiana. I think we can work something out. I've got a plan. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a list of videos. I tried to make a list of videos that I would film. Wait, your dad has a huge mount. He does. Around. And he has a river with easy in and out access with some sloped banks going in and out of it. And I did talk to him about it today. I said, hey, so just in theory, dad, if I got a Jeep and I wanted to bury it in a river, how about yours? And he was like, I don't care. Oh, you guys remember where we got the first gen mud truck that we bought way back for four grand? We bought, we paid four grand for that thing just to destroy it. It was a lot of fun. You guys really liked that series. Once we took it into the water, the whole interior Dunk. Yeah, it was bad. Like, it was moldy and gross. Okay, yeah, I don't know if I would, I'm not gonna say I wouldn't do the same thing again. <laughs> but this thing, I think it, I think this vehicle would do it much better because it's not so, so heavy. Same size tires, but it's a way lighter vehicle. I think that, uh, Jeeps. yeah, yeah, you're supposed to, anywhere, absolutely anywhere. It's like I mean, it does have a sticker all the way across the front that says, it's a Jeep thing, which oh, is kind wow. of, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyways, if you guys would want to see some cool, funny content with a Jeep like that, it would pretty much just be like a little trail monster to have fun with it and uh, maybe end up drowning in a river again like we did with the mud truck. Maybe give it a little bit more of a, uh, how far a chance and do some more mild stuff building up to that versus with the mud truck, we pretty much shoved a pipe in the side of it, put big tires on it, cut the fenders, and just buried it in the river. I mean, we really just, Did we didn't- Did try to pull it out with the limited? Yeah, it didn't work. Was... <laughs> it didn't last very long. I don't know, guys. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys want to see that. If so, I will pick it up literally tomorrow and uh, get started with it. Yeah, if you haven't done so yet, check out the new limited product on LMPgear.com to enter to win the 24 valve comes we're giving away right now, plus $5,000 cash. Every $1 is 20 entries to win only until January 17th, which is in just a few days. So if you haven't done so yet, hit the link in the description or go to LMPgear.com, place an order, and every $1 spent is 20 entries to win that truck. And it's gotta go to somebody, might as well be you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.